I was a little aggressive on the house because at that point the market was. I was gonna say that's like what forty five percent of your post tax income. Um. So my business? fiance does contribute to the mortgage. So right. he gives me. But well, he's not on the title. He's not on the title. Balance of three hundred sixty six thousand four hundred sixty five dollars. With, of course, you're paying primarily interest right now because that's how it works. At yep. first, $2,485 mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. It's an expensive one for just your income. The dual household will help. Still 5% higher than I'd like. 24 grand. So I think I put like 4% down. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I did definitely not make that 20%. I just didn't have the amount that, I mean, it would be 60 grand and I just didn't have that. Why do you feel you had to buy a house right then instead of renting for a year or two? Um, so I've been renting my whole life. Um, but, but you're barely in your whole life. <laughs> Almost 30. I'm going to be 30 next week. <laughs> okay. So you're um, like, if you live a long age, you're third through your life. Hi, my name is Taylor. I am 29 and uh, I work at a Fortune 500 company. I'm a senior environmental scientist. Where do you work out of? What town? Um, so I was very fortunate. Um, the company is based in Minnesota, but they have a work from anywhere you want program. And so I took the opportunity to move from Minnesota back home and I live in Belton, Texas now. Cool. What do you, what do you, what do you make yearly? So, um, my company pays me 106 K and then we have an annual incentive plan, which is 7% of that. As mm. long as the goals are met yearly, um, it typically ranges from 80 to last year it was like 110% of the AIP plan. Um, but my 100% would be like 75, like 7,500. Well, that's, I mean, that's really good. Uh, now you mentioned before this and we won't, I don't think we'll go too far into it until it's solidified if we ever have that conversation again, but you have a fiance now. I do. So is it, it's going to become a dual income household pretty soon? Yes. So he has a job. He works um, for a company that builds like trailer homes. Um, so he makes roughly, so his base is 20 an hour, but they get production bonuses every week. So typically it'll be 21 to 22 an hour, depending okay. on their sales. So. Cool. And all the accounts that we have here, are they just you? They are just me. Okay, perfect. So let's look at the checking account then. We have a Chase College checking account. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was taken out for me in like high school. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go to college? Uh, so I got my undergrad at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Um, and then I got my master's in environmental science at Washington State University. But you had deposits of only $226 this month, but then withdrawals of $4,201 and a present balance, an available balance of $3,774? Um, that's odd. So I get paid um, after taxes, and um, I have an HSA, and um, my company also has a stock buy-in program, so I put in think $200 a month for that I'm, I'm paid monthly um, and then I also have money that goes into my 401k um, after all that I make roughly 5800 a month um, so that that should be what goes in um, <laughs> <laughs> every month I don't know why it's showing it like that um, so I don't yeah. know what to tell you on that one. Yeah, that, that, that's really interesting because uh, I did see deposit there, yes. 5776 Yes. So. I think it might have just been because uh, of I didn't pull it out as a statement. I did it from like mid-month to mid-month, and that might be why sure. it's weird. Okay. Uh, well, either way, uh, I mean, that's an oak. Okay I mean, that's a good balance to have in a checking account. I try not to let it drop below 3000 because that's where I start to get uncomfortable. Mm. Um, so my mortgage payment is 2485 which I just bought a house in Belton. It's like was made in 2019. Um, made the choice because the company, they implement, implemented this work from home um, you know, process, and I was worried they were going to wa walk it back. 
So I was like that mm. and the it was right when Russia started to invade Ukraine and the interest prices were sh- like skyrocketing. Mm-hmm. Um, I locked in at 4%, which was wow, very fortunate. Yeah. Um, but I was a little aggressive on the house because at that point the market was... I was going to say, that's like what, 45% of your post-tax income? Um, so my fiancé does contribute to the mortgage. So right. he gives me... But well, he's not on the title. He's not on the title. Okay. No, but I'm, you know, he, he's helping. Um, when are y'all getting married? Um, November 5th. Okay. So right so around the corner. Very, very soon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So very cool. So, yes. so that'd be nice. What, what will your total household income be? Um, so I guess minus AIP, cause you never want to like fully take that into account. Uh, it'd be roughly like 150. Okay. Cause he's making roughly 43, I think is like 21, 22 area. So it'll be closer to about 30% of your post tax. Yes. You think? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which for many is in the, you know, a comfort level mm-hmm. of like no higher than 30%. I'm like no higher than 25% on primary residence for me yeah. personally. But I think it's within the comfort level, depending on where else your needs are. Mm-hmm. Where else your wants and then, you know, savings. Yeah. So in here, there's definitely, you have a great income. You spend a lot as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, looks like there was a uh, potential vacation. Yeah. Um, instead of doing a bachelorette party, um, I decided I didn't need to do that. And a lot of my bridesmaids were um, out of state. So me and my mother and my sister and my brother's girlfriend took a trip to Clearwater, Florida. Um, My mom paid for the hotel. She paid both for the very expensive dinners. And um, I, she also covered like a hundred dollars of my plane ticket. Mm -hmm. So I felt in a couple cases I needed to, you know, contribute to what was being spent. So I paid for the ferry over to the state park Island. I paid for a couple drinks and desserts, um, you know, parking in a couple places. So I, I felt like that was the right thing to do. Right, right. And I think it's fine with the amount of money you spend. There is a good amount. There's like uh, the salt cracker uh, there. There's something from Marriott in Honeymoon Island. Marriott, a purchase at Austin Airport, Texas Roadhouse, Raising Canes, Zell paying out, Chewy.com, The Nature Co., a Lyft ride, Amy's ice cream, Chipotle, Chipotle, an Apple subscription, um, and then Pizza Piero's, yes. Chipotle, Chewy.com again. So <laughs> that one, um, so the Chewy, one of them is for my dog's food, mm-hmm. but um, you'll see a couple purchases on here that are wedding expenses. Um, instead of throwing my bouquet, I'm throwing a plushie of a champagne <laughs> bottle. Okay. <laughs> um, so that whoever catches that will get a bottle of champagne. And that's kind huh. of going to be... Okay. Yeah. So it'll go to being a dog toy eventually. <laughs> but um, okay. in this case, it is a wedding expense. <laughs> okay. And Amazon purchases and Zell out. Amazon at home. BJ's Restaurant, Amazon Crumble. Uh, I will say I don't spend that much at Amazon. You'll see a lot of um, transactions where they refunded me. Okay. Um, I have really big feet because I'm a tall person. Okay. Um, And a lot of shoe stores don't have like size 10 or 11s. So I ordered Mm. several pairs of shoes to try on. And then the ones that didn't fit, I sent back. JCS and Round Rock. I think that might be JC's Penny. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. And Whataburger. Another Amazon purchase, which may have been reversed. And then Citizens Pay line of, I think, credit? Yes. So um, we're part of an HOA, and the HOA requires that you have a security system. And that is the security system payment. Is it a finance security system? It is, but it's 0% interest. So, um, What's the total debt on that? I think it's like $1,500, and then everything is paid off. It's for the equipment charge, I guess. For someone that makes so much money, why'd you finance $1,500? Um, so I, when I moved and I got this house, it put me into a, a number in my savings that I wasn't super comfortable with. So at the time that we were required to do it, I decided until I got back to that comfortable number, I was just going to do it, and then I can just pay it off at that point. Um, 
Well, you have the money sitting in your checking account today. I do. But like I said, I don't like it going below that that three thousand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. and I'm kind of But it is below it. that three thousand because you owe that, technically. I mean it's still negative against you. It yeah. is zero percent financing and I'm not someone that absolutely hates zero percent financing. Mm-hmm. Uh, if done well, we'll go through the finances and, you know, kind of circle back. Uh, Harris NA help ALS that 300. is my car car payment. Oh, so. okay. Oh, there's a car payment. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yep. And then we have a Wells Fargo Platinum card. Mm-hmm. There were only two transactions on here, so really nothing crazy. Yeah. And a, a credit limit of 4200 No minimum payment due, but there's an $18 balance. I assume this is just paid off every month. Yeah. Um, I don't typically hold a balance. I paid for Panic at the Disco concert tickets. For, is that what it was? <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just paying that off at the moment. Paying that off. Wait, yeah. when did you buy that? Is this also 0% or something? Oh, I just paid for it online. Um, because it's a college account, it doesn't off... It, or it has like a minimal interest. I paid for it like last month. So I have like an $18 balance left on it. Hmm. Okay. I mean, why didn't you just pay the full thing? I'm curious. Um. So when I... Bought my house. I had a really, really good credit score of like a hundred and or a hundred, a hundred, <laughs> uh, eight, ten. Mm. Um, and when I obviously opened the line of credit, it dropped it down to like the seven sixties, which I'm not super happy with. So I've been told in the past that by holding a small balance, it and paying it off regularly, um, that it can help improve the credit score more quickly. So that's what I've been doing. So. You're willing to essentially pay a fee for that? I mean, if it's like 50 cents, it doesn't bother me that much. Yeah. Isn't the whole point of having credit, though, in order to leverage it for things that, like, benefit you, though? Instead of, like, paying to have the good credit, like, the good credit should be working for you, as in it gets you those credit cards that you can pay off every single month and then take advantage of rewards, as you can take out a good, well-leveraged real estate purchase that'll cash flow well. So the only thing about the Wells Fargo card is it's not the the um, cash rewards aren't there really. Yeah. Uh, you have to like make spend them a minimum of like, I think you have to have two thousand five hundred points before you can even like refund it for anything. You don't have any other credit card, do you? I do not. Well, um, any reason? I just didn't see a need. Okay. Um, the only reason I ever got that is I did an internship in Mexico for three months and it was a if something horrible goes wrong and you need it kind of situation interesting um so I've never been like the type of person that likes to use credit cards a lot unless I have a very high expenditure like um, I had a dog that had to have like medical um examinations and it was like nine hundred dollars and I was like okay I'm gonna put that on my credit card and I'm gonna pay that off just so it doesn't wipe out my bank account this was back before I was making the money I'm making now. But. And back before you had an emergency fund, yes, I assume? Yes. I was going to say, like in, that's the purpose. This was like in college. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, I just hang on to the card because I'd rather not close it out in case there is ever a huge yeah, emergency. Yeah, I wouldn't emergency. close it. But, but yeah. Yeah. I also just, I just don't like the aspect of paying a fee, even if small, just for the sake of a good credit score. Cause I'd say I, 90% of the time there's nothing there. And there's just nothing even being used on the account. Um, but I'm like 780 credit score and I don't hold a balance on anything. So uh, and then It'll definitely be paid off uh, on the first. <laughs> okay. And with the Wells Fargo, you also have a savings account, $5,952. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is this essentially supposed to mean? Um, I just use that. I just hold that there, um, because I need to have a certain amount in the account. Um, I had to open two accounts. The first one, you know, I opened in high school, which was the Chase account. Um, but then when I moved to Corpus Christi, there were almost no Chase banks anywhere. And I worked as a, um, yeah, no, there's like none. Um, and I worked as a, um, 
a hostess and then as a server. So I was having nightly, you know, tips. And so I wanted to have somewhere where I could go and deposit the money and not just like hold it on me. And so I opened the Wells Fargo account. You consider this like a part of your emergency fund or? Um, yeah, it's kind of part of the emergency fund, but like just a separate entity because when I lived in Washington, again, there were no Chase, so all of the money I made there was deposited into my Wells Fargo account. And I can freely move money between the two if I need to. Okay. Yeah, I have my Chase account linked to my Wells Fargo account, so if I ever needed to, like, move money, I can do that. And then there is the Chase account. We have a Chase savings of $11,007. What is this supposed to represent? Um, this... So this is where I have my majority of my emergency fund the Mm. if i need it in an instant i can have it um that i would be more comfortable if it was at the fifteen thousand. that's kind of where i set my happiness limit um on that one um and then after that i would like to contribute to my outside accounts um but i'm just not quite there yet and i take out um a thousand dollars out of my checking every month and i put it into my savings and then in your fidelity we have four thousand four hundred two dollars this is in an individual account and then a health savings account so is this through work so yes yeah, so um the the company i'm in allows you to put money into an account and then buy stocks for that company at a discount of like 15 percent mm-hmm. um so i put two hundred dollars in there a month or so uh might be a little bit more um and then bought this by the stocks at a reduced rate and that's what you do that's what the individual account is then yes and then it also has a separate account for the hsa for any health savings okay so you have three thousand seven hundred ninety dollars in your company's stock yes and then six hundred twelve dollars in the hsa okay yes and then in an other account so it says balance eight thousand four hundred twenty one, but available cash one hundred thirty five. So this is with Raymond James. Yes. That m- means that eight thousand four hundred twenty one is tied up in U.S. equities, some fixed income fund, non U.S., yeah. little real estate, but not much cash alternatives. So what's your purpose with having this? Um. So I've started this. Um, because I didn't like having, um, this was back when I had roughly like $40,000 sitting in my savings account. Mm -hmm. And my dad was like, you can't just let that sit there. It's not going to do anything. It's not growing for you. It's not doing anything. So you're going to take 20,000 of this and you're going to go put it in this account. And hopefully it's going to accrue, accrue much more than just sitting in your savings, obviously. Um, this was before I knew I was going to be buying a house. This was for the purposes of (laughs) in five years buying a house, um, so I put in twenty thousand dollars, and then over the next couple of months, I put in an extra three thousand. Um, then I took out ten thousand for the down payment on the house, and unfortunately, it's not doing so well right now. Uh-uh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping you know that'll eventually turn back up, but I am unfortunately down at this point. Yeah, um, yeah. but that's you're available to just like that's not within like a this isn't an IRA or anything, right? No, no, no. Okay. I can take this out anytime I need. I just, you know, have to give my guy a call and be like, hey, I need X amount of money out of here. And when you pulled the money out that you did, mm-hmm. uh, what, did you set aside money for taxes on that? Yes. Okay, perfect. So you then have a 401k as well, yeah. which is great. How long have you been in your position? Um, so I've only been with my company for a year. Um, before that I worked as a contractor, um, but the company picked me up after working with the contractor ship for three years. Um, I made less than half of what I made make now at the contractor ship. Mm. Um, so I didn't have a whole lot of opportunity to save into a 401k, um, there just because I lived in Minneapolis and it was very expensive. So now you're just plowing away at 7%. I am doing my best. Um, I have it set that every year it increases 2%. <laughs> which, <laughs> Why? Um, just it's just the preset. Your... Okay. Um, but, you know, once I hit my comfortable savings portion, I do want to increase that. Um, 
I just haven't done it because, you know, with the house and everything, it kind of knocked me back down a little bit to where I'm not comfortable. <laughs> One thing that's a little interesting with this, with the portfolio makeup, 33% are in money markets. It seems like kind of oddly conservative. Um, so I consulted with somebody and they were like, you know, while you're investing when you're young, you want to be very aggressive. You want to be very aggressive. And I was like, well, I'm being very aggressive in my Raymond James and it's not doing so great. So well, right now, <laughs> yeah, but I can change this portfolio at any time. If you want to, I mean, I think this might be, well, this is just for me. For me, I think this might be a little overly conservative. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go necessarily I don't know what the Raymond James is specifically because they just kind of mentioned what the funds were in, but not the actual funds. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that aggressive as, if that's very aggressive as well. Mm -hmm. But yes, I mean, the fact that 10% is in the S&P 500, I'm like, mm, come on. Well, so another portion of it is in a... Um, oh, 2055. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that kind of distributes it in another set, yeah. I guess. I'm not really understanding super well how that one goes Inflation, small mid cap I mean I like where all of this is based except for the money market fund and there's 33% of that so a third yeah but I mean that's a personal choice on your end yeah. and the fact that you're putting 7% away that's incredible I mean that's awesome um, it's just you know I feel like once the market has stabilized a little bit I'd feel more comfortable putting a higher percentage you know in the Oh, well, it's hard aggressive. to say when the market will stabilize. We'll never know until really hindsight. So yeah. it's best to just always go in and never time the market. It just feels like throwing money out the window. I know. No, you're buying at a discount. <laughs> I you, know. We're You and I, we're both so young. By the time we retire, if the stock market is anywhere close to where it is today, mm -hmm. then the country may as well be done. So, like, yeah. it, it, it doesn't make sense to try to time. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. You did buy a home. I did. You have a balance of, uh, so wait, yep. Balance of $366,465 with, of course, you're paying primarily interest right now because that's how it works. At yep. first, $2,485 mortgage payment. Mm hmm. It's an expensive one for just your income. The dual household will help. Still 5% higher than I'd like when we did our rough math, but still. So my fiance contributes roughly the, the 800, so it's setting me at like 30% of my yeah, income, okay. I think. Um, Is it a nice house? Because it's... It's a nice house. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it's a small honestly, town, right? So It's a small town, but it's a brand new development. It's a three-bedroom um, two and a half bath, great backyard, and a really nice neighborhood. Um, I don't have any complaints with the house, and I can easily Good. see myself staying there for 30 years. I mean, it was built in 2019, so the roofing is in great shape. The HVAC is in great shape. I'm not going to have to like do any major repairs for a really long time, and that sure. kind of factored into my thought process on why you know uh but i do see 86 dollars a month in pmi meaning that you oh no 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 86 dollars a month until you reach 20 percent equity is yes, what it is I how did much that. did you put down um i put so in closing costs i think it was 24 grand so i think i put like four percent down oh yeah uh yeah yeah um i did definitely not make that 20%. I just didn't have the amount that, I mean, it would be 60 grand and I just didn't have that. Why do you feel you had to buy a house right then instead of renting for a year or two? Um, so I've been renting my whole life. Um, but, but you're barely in your whole life. <laughs> I'm almost 30. I'm going to be 30 next week. <laughs> okay, so you're um, like, if you live a long age, you're a third through your life. So I just felt that with the income that I had, and it's a very stable job, like um, the company basically can't do, can't sell products um, without me and my team. Um, it's a very stable job. It has a great growth potential. I felt like I could afford it despite the expense. Um, and that... Wait, <laughs> no, that, that statement didn't make sense. I could afford it despite the expense. Dis despite the... Um, what it was going to, you know, with, with my income, I could afford it and maintain the style of 
living the quality of life that I'd been living at the time. Um, because I was already, I was renting a house and I was putting away $2,500 a month in savings. Yeah. Um, and because I know that it's very likely that the market is just going to continue to grow and I did want to get back to Texas, um, and I had no guarantee that the company I was with was going to maintain this, you can work from home forever, you know, um, mentality at the time. Um, so I got permission and I kind of jumped at the opportunity. So there's a few things that I like from it. Mm-hmm. One, love that you got in at a 4% interest rate. I like that your household income will be going up in just over a month. Mm-hmm. You did it wrong, technically, because you've barely put anything down and know you cannot afford the house payment. I know it feels like, you know, with the money, but, I mean, it's well over 25% of your post-tax, which means you can't afford it. However, things are going in a way where it's going to work out. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be fine. So, you know, it's a situation-to-situation type of thing, and the situation will work. I think it will work. There's a highly likelihood that it will work, but it was also a bit of a risky play. It was. Um, fortunately, you know, I always, my family, um, and it was part of an option that we were looking at. Um, my family owns a piece of land in East Texas that has a house on it um, that if anything ever happened, you know, it's open to family use for, you know, set periods of time. Mm. And so if I ever had to, like, sell the house, I could go there and recoup costs um, if mm. I needed to. Um, you didn't want to go there and save up money? Well, the only problem is they don't have great internet access, mm. um, so mm-hmm. I would have had to pay for a satellite or something because I do need internet access with my job, yeah. um, and that either pay them to lay lines or buy a satellite link or something like that. So um, that's always an option if worse came to worse, but I don't anticipate that to happen. So tell me about this car loan. What's the balance? What's the interest? What's the car? Um, so it is a 2015 Chrysler 200. Okay. Um, I bought it in 2018. Um, it the balance is three thousand right now. Okay. And I pay it's the the monthly um, payment is two forty, but I pay three hundred. So I'm hoping that in a year I'll be completely. Paid What's off. the interest? I think it was like seven <laughs> percent. Well, that's not good. Yeah, it's not great. And it was um, like a six-year loan, but you're just paying a little f- extra to make it five? I think it was, maybe, I don't know. Remember. Well, it's been four years. Well, so the only thing is I don't really look at the loan very often, which is not great, but um, it's because it's with this BMO Harris, and the only way you can actually like get into their accounts is to like open a bank account with them, and so I just pay it on their guest portal every month. What am I going to say? <laughs> what am I going to say? <laughs> What do you mean? What am I going to say? What's the next thing I'm going to say? Oh, come on. Half the audience is screaming it right now. I know. Dude, this is beyond simple. You have $25,000 sitting in savings. One is in those equities. And not including that, you have $17,000 in savings. Pay off the car today. It makes no sense to continue paying 7%. Even if you're paying extra on it, you're still paying 7% interest. This is bad money. This is bad money. That makes no sense. Number two, you then pay the security debt today. And then over the next two months, you just rebuild to where you are right now aggressively. And your emergency fund is taken care of pretty much. Get it to $20,000. And also the emergency fund, screw chase. It's giving you nothing. Open up something that gives you 2% a year. I, I just have never been a huge fan of having multiple credit cards. Do you have one that you... Credit cards? For, for the the credit no, card isn't one that give you, gives uh, you nothing back. No, no, I'm... What? I'm talking about the, the Chase. Your Chase savings. Yeah. You're, you take that... You don't put money in there anymore. No. Put it in something that gives you 2% a year. Chase is giving you like 0.01% or something. I just like... Like, I always just like having a certain amount on hand. Um, it, what it will be, just with a different company. <laughs> Do you have a recommendation? Marcus is good. Marcus by Goldman Sachs is fine. I saw someone came in here uh, with one. He was getting like 
what was it? It was something crazy. 3%? Was it 5%? I think it was 3%, but still, okay. at least let it keep up with normal inflation. Okay. You're losing money just having it sit there. Okay. So, but either way, because you'll still have a comfortable amount of money, you can close those equity positions if you have to in a crazy emergency. Mm-hmm. The car makes no sense. If you want to ride the security thing out as zero APR, fine, if you really want to. I would still just take care of it. So you've moved into a home. You're about to get married. This new chapter of life is going to start Start it with no debt. Okay. just makes sense. But the car, that makes no mathematical sense. Even pay an extra on it with a 7% interest, pay that off. You literally have the money, pay it off, and then take that couple thousand dollars with the great income you make and just replenish that savings within a month easily. So I can see myself paying off the car. I could put 600 down a month, like pay it off in... No, pay it off today. Well, so I do want to save some money in case I need anything extra for the wedding. There have been some wedding expenses that I've had to do. So I Is it not budgeted well? Um, so my mom is helping me a lot. My family's helping me a lot, mm-hmm. but there are certain, you know, extra expenses that come up like, Oh, don't for, we need to get this or, you know, you need to get your bridesmaids gifts because that sounds like <laughs> we didn't sit down and budget this thing out. Well, the expenses just come up when you don't think about them sometimes. They're yeah. Just when you don't budget them out. <laughs> That's <laughs> yes. So, okay. It might be worth regrouping the wedding committee and saying, this is how much money we need in order to complete this thing, every line item, because that's what should be done in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, yes, pay this car off. Even if you're paying extra, it still makes no sense with that 7% interest. Mm-hmm. You're just losing 7% of the money. It's, just, it's so bad. So I, I thought it was preset out to where, like, that's that's what it is. Like, so it's 242, 42, 42, 42, 40 every month until I get there to the end. Isn't that factored in in the beginning? I'm trying to understand what you mean, but what you can do is typically, the the loan provider that you mentioned, I actually have not heard of before, Mm -hmm. but go through their program, see what their payoff is for the car, and that should be better than the whatever is remaining if you just do the minimum monthly payments or extra because of the 7% interest. Take a look at it. It could be weird. Um, Companies like that love to find ways to (laughs) screw you up, but just take a look at it. And if it makes sense, and I'm very confident that it will, Mm -hmm. just pay it off. Even if extra wedding money comes up, you have the money necessary. And you're going to replenish your full emergency fund. No more of that, what was it, Wells Fargo or something? Mm -hmm. The Wells Fargo credit card? No, uh, what was that? Uh, No, the Wells Fargo savings. Mm Mm-hmm. No more of that. No more of this chase. You just have one emergency fund that is $20,000 in something like Marcus. Okay. They're not giving you anything. You're giving them stuff right now. Mm. Take advantage of that. And then you guys are starting debt-free? You, you did a lot of school. Do you have any student loans? I do not. Awesome. Really good. Any debt that will be taken on from the husband? Um, I mean, he'll he has car payments. Um, but he doesn't have any school. You debt. know the remainder balance on his car. Um, I think he has like five thousand left on his car. He just got it a little while ago, but he paid like four thousand down on it initially. So and all, he's making extra payments as well. You all may as well uh, make extra, extra, extra payments on that mm-hmm. and have that paid off by midwinter. I see no reason not to. And then you guys are truly well, debt free except for the so house. So. He is thinking about, you're going to be so mad about this. He is thinking about um, ordering a Ford Maverick, which has much better gas mileage and is an electric car. Um, He looked on Kelly Blue Book, and if he went to CarMax right now, he could trade his car in for $17,000. And my company has a um, program with Ford where you get a discount for buying their products. Um, so the car would be roughly 23 grand. He would get 17 for the car. He would pay that to it. And that would 20. So 23 minus 17. Yeah. So he would need five grand. Yeah. Does he have five grand? I think he has like four grand. He could just throw at it. Make him have five grand. And then yes. (laughs) Well, the car wouldn't come in until next year. So he's got time to accrue and 
oh, put it away. Oh, so he doesn't have to pay yeah, the full thing like, until next no, year? No, no, it's like you order it, and then it comes in, and then you pay for oh, it. Oh, that's fine. There. No, if it's in your uh, married household income, that's fine. Just make sure he buys it and doesn't yeah. take out leverage down a depreciating asset. Exactly. Especially next year, I bet the housing market will be in a, or the uh, vehicle market will be in a much more normal place. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's pretty crazy. But pay your right car now. off, pay his car off, and then you can still trade in, mm-hmm. you know. Well, but the trade-in might not be equal next year. <laughs> we'll just, just play that by ear, but just don't take out debt for it and just get rid of these loans because you just have the money to do it. Just get well, rid of it. There's one other thing is I, at the end of the year, I want to get my wisdom teeth out. I've never had them out. Okay. Um, so that I don't know what the cost is going to be of that. I paid for the highest like maximum deductible for um, dental insurance this year, which dental is different than medical. You don't meet a deductible. It's like you have this amount and this is what they'll Mm -hmm. pay. Um, But I don't know what it'll be at the end of it. I'm thinking it might be like a grand um, probably. So you can can do a grand easy. Yeah. That that does not impact today's pay off the car because you'll then have, if you cut back some of the fund spending Mm -hmm. for a couple of months, you can have your emergency fund of 20000 You make so much money. <laughs> Post-tax and contributions to things, you make so much money. Yeah. Have that emergency fund be $20,000 and have an extra $1,000 for the wisdom teeth. Don't be scared. Stop being scared. <laughs> I, I can tell you're just afraid of some of these balances dropping. But remember that it is worse right now for you to be paying 7% on this car. Okay. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Um, no, I'm just going to... I've. Totally forgot to bring a pen and a paper, so I'm <laughs> um, just going to have to go watch this video a couple times and like take notes. So, <laughs> Let Taylor know what you think about her financial situation in the comments below. And if you want to see these happen live as well as chat with me on a daily basis and have a video chat once a week, feel free to join my private Discord, which is linked in the description below. Shout out to my four cups of coffee supporters, Abdiel Martinez, Mark, Josh Bennett, Clayton006, Taylor Trong, Drew Smith, Timothy Williams, Sam I.M., Jason Spriggs, Nicholas Dowling, Tom L., Jay Freedom, and Hans. Eight Cups of Coffee supporters making the dream come true. Joseph Strickland, Anthony, an anonymous supporter, and Sam V 3 Subscribe and stick around for more. Thanks.